everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our fifth edition of Ted Ed Lumuri. Okay. Um, my name is Barry Oliver. I'll be presenting you guys, of course. Um, once again, do your best. Okay. And I'm going to start this um, this um, session of speech of speeches or talks with the following. I'm actually going to talk about you guys, about you students. Um, since the beginning of this week. I've been having a lot of you coming up to me saying, teacher, I'm actually, I'm nervous. Teacher, I don't know what is success. Teacher, what I'm going to talk about success. And I just want to tell you guys that you already are successful students. You guys always have little things in life that you want to achieve. Either you want to be good students, you want to be, um, go, get good grades, or you want to do really good at sports, or you want to do really good at music. And every time you achieve those things that you actually propose yourself to do, that means that you're being successful. That means that you achieved success. So once again, I know that this time over here, you will also be successful on your talks. So without further ado, I'm going to give the mic to the first teacher, which is Haley Torres. So thank you guys. <laughs> so the first student that is going to come up here is... Hey, don't sleep until he's complete. Nikola Tesla never give up until he see his big project. Kobe Bryant never give up until he see that big, the big player he is. Um, that's called success. Achieving your goals, fulfilling your dreams. Many say that success is having a lot of money or, fa or be famous. But be success is fool your dreams, um, follow your, your goals, and complete it. When I was little, I thought that being successful was living your life fully with nothing else to do in your life. But then I realized that success was fulfilling your goals and feeling happy with yourself. Many people say, think that love is also success. But success is not really, it doesn't really come when you feel happy with that person, that special person, that special person for you, for some, for someone is your mother, for others is your partner, but that is personal. Uh, for me, the key to success, it's be happy with yourself, love yourself, be patient, um, have some goals always, that you feel that you're gonna make it and be fine with you, be good, and love yourself. Because if you don't feel love for you, you're not going to be, you're going to think that you're bad, that you're not going to be successful in the life. If you think that you're all the time, it's gonna, you're going to be sad, and that's not good. Because that, it don't, it's don't, it don't affect yourself, it affects the others, like your family, friends, and all that stuff. And that's it. Thanks. <laughs> No, you did a good. Okay. Great. Thank you, Marco. That was that was good. So the following student that is coming here is Sebastian Castro with the tech title. Why do you inspire people to achieve success and you don't even try? So let's go. Here goes to the mic. Right here. Good luck. Is the key to success inspired? When we search for the key to success, it's important to take advice with a grain of salt. Be aware that most of it is going to help you obtain more things rather than making you an impact. If, as I suspect, success means to you than the kind of car that is in your driveway, I encourage you to keep listening to me. I discovered each of these steps during my time starting the life of history greatest archivers. No matter their area of expertise, they all had similar habits and beliefs that helped them produce incredible results that most of the time they got to the point that they wanted because they were focusing on their stuff and not looking back to what the people were doing behind them. It is a goal that over the years and with a great effort you can achieve success. Most of the time you need a lot of discipline. Life makes so many turns and to achieve success you might, be, you might need to be focused. To achieve success, we must be clear that focusing on ourselves and having discipline is the best key. 
Life is not based on who is better or worse, but it is on how much you care about reaching your goals out. We all have different talents. Some develop it at sports, others at school, and most of us have it for life. For me, the key to success is having a vision and purpose of where we would like to be is good. But if we don't take actions, that will never happen. One of the advice we should take from is from the self-made people. It's admirable how they produce and reach out the, their goals and put it in the place that they want it to be at. If you want to achieve the key to success, you might need to cheer up yourself and put yourself in the first panorama that you have. And then, and in that moment, you can start cheering and inspiring the others to achieve their success. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. <laughs> okay, so the following student is Jose de la Cruz talking about self confidence. So let's give it up. No, Jose, Jose. Jose, Jose, come, Jose, Jose. Oh, it's okay. Jose de la Cruz. Here. Oh, all right. Have you ever thought about how you can get self-confidence? Well, I'm here to talk about that. What is self-confidence? Self-confidence can refer to a general sense of trust in your own abilities, to con in your ability to control your life. Or it might be situation specific, more situation specific. For example, you might have a high self-confidence in particular areas, but of expertise, but left, but feel left in, but feel left confidence in other areas. Self confidence is a feeling of, of trust in your abilities, qualities, and judgments. Research suggests uh, that confidence is important to help and learn, to help and learn to be more confident and repeat the benefits of increasing your trust, your trust and belief in yourself. Fortunately, there are several ways to increase your your self-confidence. Stop comparing yourself to another's. Do you compare how you look to people you follow on Instagram? Or maybe you compare your salary to what your friends earn. Social comparison is natural, is natural, but it's unlikely to help boost your, your self-confidence. It may even the, have the opposite effect. Things of things that you are good at. Everyone has strengths and talents. What are yours? Recognizing what you are good at and trying to build on those things. We help you to, to build confidence in your own abilities. And the last one is get a hobby. Trying to find something that you are really passionate about. It could be photograph, sports, or knitting, anything else. When you have worked on your passions, commit yourself to give a go. Thanks. Okay. So good. Now, guys, we have Richard Damaso with the three keys to success. So let's give it up for Richard. Richard, let me let me put this wherever. Um, hello, my name is Richard and I'm going to be talking about the three keys to success. How do you define success in life? Well, many people consider success as achieving some goal they have, having a lot of money, achieving their ideal career, or simply having a healthy life. Success in life means attaining your vision of a good life. It means achieving ex specific goals that result in the future that you have planned for yourself. So, that, so now that you know how to achieve success, what success, success means, 
I'm going to give you three keys to achieve that success. First key, make a plan. This means having a clear picture of what success looks like to you and putting together a well-defined set of goals that you have to that life. Second key, prepare for the unexpected. Many of the best laid plans have been delayed by a single misstep. And third, uh, and third key, prioritize your goals. As you create your systems and put you, your good habits into practice, you will probably find there isn't enough time in each day to work towards every goal. Manage, manage, manage your time wisely so that the right activities take priority. The trick is that I mentioned you are not all or nothing. However, the most of these you have, the better you will do as you try to figure out how to achieve that success. Okay. So coming up is Osvaldo de Luna talking about how to achieve success in life. So let's give it up for Osvaldo. Hello, my name is uh, my name is Osvaldo Medio. Today I'm going to talk about uh, success in the life, but not in 100% in the financial part. So in the emotional part, uh, successful is many. Also many people is associate the word success in a lot of a lot of money, a lot of cars, a lot of houses and girls. But success is not, the, is not that. Success is defined as ha happiness in general. For example, when we are completing an activity and after you a long time, you win this activity, you are complete this activity, and you say, wow, I can do that. So success in the part financial is, is it's uh, something very pretty, but, but you say something is missing. You have money, you have a lot of things, but you are alone. How I can get alone? You, you are win that thing you are... You are achieved uh, in a lot of time, but it's not that what you completed. It's not that what completed you. Now, to the part of, to everyone is waiting in the interesting part. How I can successful in the finance part? Because successful is obtained, for example, by having a by having a giant company with your earned millions, etc., and that that is one thing. But in the final, you start with a uh, little corporation, little empresa, and you have you have to create something that the People like something innovate. Um, repeat and improvise. So you're live or not? Thank you. Me equivoqué más de lo que pensé. It's okay. Okay, so thank you, Osvaldo. Um, coming up is Leonardo Dotera talking about is university is always the key to be successful. So come on, Leonardo. Here it is, Dotera. Did I say it right? There it is. Okay. Is university always the key to be successful? Just think about it. Most of us think that university is always the key, but are we right? In this world, there are many ways to get success, but what we really need to find is our key. 
The real question is, can you do it without university or do we need it? Parents believe that university is always the best choice, but they need to understand the two sides of the story. University is good and you learn a lot of important and essential things, but that doesn't mean that you're better than anyone. Some people learn better being in the university and others just with work or personal experience. With a university, uh, you can have uh, great opportunities. Nowadays, nowadays, any person that knows English, for example, can have an issue at work. Maybe you can get a job or create your own business uh, and increase your personal experience, even your earnings. What you choose is what is going to define your success. That's what people always say. But what is going to define your success it is if you're constant and you have discipline in, in your projects, studies, even in your work. Because it doesn't matter the way. What doesn't, what, sorry. Because it doesn't matter the way. What really matters is how you do the process. When society understands that the choice is up to us, maybe the world can be better talking about individually success. Remember, if, remember, if you're constant and disciplined, you can do whatever you want. So if you want to go to university, go and achieve your dreams. But if you don't, achieve your dreams too, because the choice is on you. So thank you, Leonardo. That was, that was really nice. So coming up is Mariana Gotera talking about who perseveres at cheese. So let's give it up to Mariana. <laughs> when we were kids, most of us learned to ride a bicycle. While we were learning, we fell down and we said that we are not going to be able to do it. But we ended up doing it because we have perseverance and confidence in ourselves to, that we are going to be able to do it. Perseverance is one of the main qualities that we must have in order to be successful. Thinking that we won't achieve uh, what we plan makes us sick. When these thing, this things happen, the least thing we can do is to take away our desire to, to reach our goal. Uh, perseverance is an attitude toward life. It means continue no matter what comes in your way, always standing firm in what we set out to do. The possibilities of being able to achieve success are in your will to persist and move forward. <laughs> Some people lose patience because because they get tired of waiting, but also for what other people say. Because unfortunately, all of us, or most of us, get, uh, care, get care about other people's opinions. For example, there are people that who can say, stop that now, you're wasting your time, or better do something else because that's not going to drive you anywhere. Uh, this type of comment make us think that we are not really going to achieve it. But those are the comments that we have to pay least attention to because we must always have a positive mind and persist until we achieve it. I'm sure that at some point it crossed our minds to stop trying because we saw that we are doing and doing things to and doing things to get what we want, but it didn't come to us. Or or also that too much time passed and we didn't see any result. But despite that, we have to, despite that, we can stop doing all this because who perseveres achieve. And you will see that with time and effort, you will get everything you set out to do. Thank you. So, thank you, Mariana. Coming up is, okay, Carlos. Carlos Guerrero talking about success items, right? Hey, I like the info. Let me put this on you. Michael Jordan got up at 3 in the morning to practice. Nikola Tesla 
sleep two hours every morning. Leonardo da Vinci sleeps 20 minutes every four hours. All these people made sense and left trace in the history of the humanity. Great sources are born as simple dreams. We all make plans, dreams, goals, and visually things or goals that we would like to achieve. But are we talking actions that lead us lovely these dreams, goals, or objectives? Success began with assuming that you can influence, influence, you can influence the, uh, the things that happen to you in the life. Started by you understand that your futures depend only that you and the decision you make at each morning. Success is life to according your values, choosing your own goals, making your own decisions. Success is that you are able to appreciate that you have to find satisfaction in every mo in everything do you have and see and feel happy every moment. Being successful depends your on the attitude with you face your day to day. The key to success is start or are you ready? Okay, so thank you, Carlos. So coming up is Ashley Mejia talking about the success, the success of perseverance. Come on, come on, come on. There you go, girl. You just know she's breathing in and now. It's gonna be fine. My thing. I said it wrong myself. So. Okay. There I go. Perseverance is a one of the most important skill. Oh, sorry. skills for the life of the human being if they want to achieve success. How can someone be perseverant? Well, it's very easy to work hard every day for what you want and to know that even if there are struggle or you wait to continue with the goal that you want to achieve. Why is perseverance the key to success? Perseverance means dedication and effort. Perseverance is an uh, attitude towards life. Perseverance means to continue no matter what, what, <laughs> what is in the way to always remain free. The chance of achieving success depend largely. largely. Oh, oh okay. sorry. Literally on your willingness to persons and person. A great part of the people believe that success is only to work and earn a lot of money. That's why the man of the day of the human being is to be rich, but it's not like that a many thing. To reach the identity of being rich and earn a lot of money. What do we need? Persons. That is one to made of a lack that perseverance is to be able to achieve the goal we to set or to do. What do people gain by perseverance? People gain persons which make them a person who can and wants to achieve that way set out to do. If you set your mind to if, to if you will have achieved, so achieve what you want and that led you to success. To success, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. You're going. You're going. You're good. Guys, let's give it up for Ashley. Let's give it up for Ashley. She did it great. Okay, great, great. Good. Coming up is a topic that I really like myself. Then listen to the name, guys. Is the key to success is not looking for other people's opinion. This is Eva Morales. She's gonna come and talk about that. So let's give it up for Eva. Come on, Eva. Come on, come on. This is a really good topic. Hi. 
how do you define success? It is having every Sunday morning with your family, fame, love, money. I don't know, but, but there is no definition of what type of success every single one of you should have. Well, there wasn't until the society put some type of stereotypes on people. And in general, most of the people that want to achieve success looks for others' opinion, and that is not bad, as long as you don't put their opinion before what you really, what you really want. Don't change your mind about your definition just because other people are commenting about that or saying that is wrong, because it's not. You choose it because you like it, so do it. Since I was little, I have always seen that the best way to reach success is having money and a good job. But I think success is more than that. I do not care if I am like everyone else, because if for me success is starting business or being a teacher, that is what success really means to me. And I do not care if I am going to end like the others, because that is what success means to me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Eva. So, uh, coming up is Axel with his topic, Is there really a key to success? So, an applause, please. What have you learned from school and society? Ever since we were little, we've heard the same thing over and over again from most adults. In order to be successful in life, you must go to school, go to university, get good grades, get a degree, and find a good paying job so you can at least succeed when you're old. Well, I wasn't taught that way. In order to be successful in life, you must think outside the box. Get out of the matrix, like some will say. I don't think it's wrong to help society or do what they hope you will do. I just think that in order to be successful in life, you must think about your ambitions first. Why there's not a key to success? There's no key to success because not everyone, not everyone thinks the same way, acts the same way, or climbs a mountain the same way. Everyone has different talents, ambitions, goals, ways of thinking and acting. Maybe what works for some don't work for others, but that's the point in life, isn't it? F find what you truly desire, give your 100% effort to that thing, and reach the top with it. Possibly, I'm not good as a doctor, then why should I waste 10 years of my life preparing for something I'm not good at? It makes no sense. Uh, if you start thinking that there is a key to success, you'll never find your key. There is not such a thing as perfect. An example of this are exams. In exams, they show you you only got one right answer, but in real life, you actually got plenty of them. You just need, you just need to choose wisely. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Axel. So coming up is Sara Cristina Martinez with his topic, Take Smart Risk. So come on. So you know better. There it is. Okay. So, do you know that Jeff Bezos took a big risk by stop selling books online and, and transformed his business to Amazon? Well, let's get the story at the point. Um, what is success for you? Well, like many others, success is to be happy. But for me, it's taking a smart risk. And no matter how big or small they are, they may find out that you are something completely different when you try different tactics. Taking risks can be intimidating, intimidating, but taking a smart risk is the solution. They say, who does not risk does not advance. And this is something that we can see in, in all kinds of situations. For example, in, in when directors make unexpected films or, 
or in the business world. According to Harvard, there are some things that you can make sure the risks you can take are smart and actually help you get, the good, get to the goal you have in your mind. This from Harvard to make you to be successful. Successful. Uh -huh. Tip one, understand what's going on in your brain, and tip two, understand that risks are good. In conclusion, in conclusion, we can take risks in a smart way, not just moving our, not just moving on, not just moving on without planning as anything. You need to take a smart risk, a skills to succeed in your life, and be so much better that Jeff Bezos and taking one step at a uh, time. Thank you. Thank you, Sara. Okay, so here is Karen Montserrat Ureña with her topic, why finishing a university career is the key to success. So let's give it up for Montserrat, please. Yeah. Well, so for me, the key to success is to finish university because when you do, you will clarify your future. But owning a university degree will open many doors uh, for you for jobs that can fit on your expectations. Um, to be honest, the college is the place where you meet new people with different personalities um, and different way of being. Um, but the thing that you learn in the college is like patient because I know it because my sister always telling me that she almost lost her patient because of people that crazy people and things like that. But those college years will actually mark on your life because it's not just about a study. You are gonna are gonna meet people and go to parties and you can ask to your family members and they will tell you the exact same thing that that is the best place where some people but some people uh, at, when they finish their career um, they don't even dedicate themselves of what they study because it's something that is okay, but it's important to rely your career you like the most because you learn so much and it, and it helps you uh, in the future because university is a big place filled with adults and, and people that you can meet. They're, there are some people that don't even know what they are studying because, because their parents want them to study the thing that they like just because of money or because they study, they study and they want to, their sons to study what they study. But I, in my opinion, I think that a career is something that is that is very personal that you have to study what you want. But it's okay if you think at the final you have to switch. Everyone choose their their own path at the end. But never give up on achievement what you want to achieve. And the most importantly, don't let the college experience pass. We all need it to succeed.
Hello guys. So now we're gonna have a student from ninth grade. She was sick yesterday, she didn't do it. Uh, so she's gonna do it today, okay? Uh, her name is Valeria Pender. She's in ninth grade and her talk is successful by Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is one of the most famous singer-songwriters songwriters in the world. She's admired by many people, including fans, co-workers, and even her family. Uh, but if you don't know who she is, I'm going to give you a little read. First, you need to adopt some of her manners. An example is that she, she's able to accept compliments in a grateful and elegant way. Another example is that even if she doesn't like somebody, she keeps her dislike private and doesn't try to put the other person down. Something else that you can do that will help is to chase your dreams and don't be afraid to take risks. Taylor is constantly thinking of new ways to challenge herself, herself in order to develop as a better person. Another thing is to be kind to others and open to your friends. Taylor has a very optimistic attitude throughout her life which helps her succeed. She also has a large circle of friends in which she can trust and can count. And last but not least, is to Figure out your talent and be creative with it. Taylor's talent is writing. You should discover your own talent, develop it, and be very creative. Okay, good. Hello, everyone. How are you guys? Good? Are you excited? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so for those that don't know me, I'm teacher Nicole Rivera for the group B2, and we're coming next, yes. So the first one is Laila Aldaguara, and the title is, Can Success Be Harmful? Let's go. Okay, can success be harmful? The answer is yes. Failure is difficult, but success is more dangerous. Failure can make a man, and success can ruin a man. Success is something that consumes you entirely. It's not that success is, that success is bad, but you must digest it. This often causes an overly inflated view of your abilities, causing everyone to yell, I did this. Yes, I know, we are very interested in being successful, but what is success for you? Do you know? Success is something, is, success is associated with triumph or the achievement of victory in something that we have proposed, as well as obtaining recognition due to our merits, fame, or wealth. What are we willing to do for success? Success is addicting, and you become to do just about anything to keep it. We cut corners, abandon friends, work longer than we should, and more. And we do it to remain at the top. Success becomes an idol, a false god we serve. The problem is that our idea of success is nonetheless ours. We take it from marketing, newspapers, magazines, which are what defines us who are successful. Uh, uh, if I work harder, I will be more successful. And if I am more successful, I will be happier. Not necessarily, because when we reach success, the goal changes, and, is, and if happiness comes later, we will never reach it. Perhaps the ideal of, of success is what Albert Einstein once said, try not to become a man of success, but rather try to become a man of value. It is not success that transforms our world, but lenses with which see reality. If we manage to change lenses, the way of seeing reality and the before of interpreting our happiness will change. This does not derive from success, but causes it. Let's not wait to be successful to be happy. Thank you. Okay, very good, Laila. 
So now we have next Claudia Bogart with the title, The Journal of Your Own Success. Okay, let me, all right, Claudia. Let me put you this right here. There you go, you wait. Okay. Are you doing everything you can to achieve success? But do you even know what success really means for you? Well, not everyone knows immediately what they want in life or they don't feel that they succeeded. But that is completely fine. It means you have to look for how you imagine yourself in the future being the reason that makes you happy with yourself and with what you had done in your life. Success is defined as the status of having achieved and accomplished an aim or objective. In other words, being successful means reaching your goals to end up being fulfilled and happy in life. For that reason, success can mean different things for everyone depending on their priorities and what they want to accomplish, either as a material or personal thing. If you don't know what it means to you, just take your time and start to uncover the deep questions of your success journey. First, ask yourself all the things you want to achieve in different areas of your life. Make sure those things are your own goals and not expectations based on someone else. You will notice that some of your goals matter more than others. Well, success means moving towards those goals. After knowing what things you have to do, what things you have to do to feel successful, you'll have to find a way that by short goals you will accomplish your big ones and achieve a long-term success. It sounds easy, but it actually takes time and a lot of persistence. In the process, a lot of people tend to give up or quit. Giving up and just doing nothing will not help you to find your own definition of success. Neither will doing whatever it comes to not feel dissatisfying or being associated with failure. Two key pieces you always have to keep in mind are that it's never too late to start over and that you're the only one who knows what success means in your life. So don't get yourself be influenced on, or compared in other, in other people's success because even if you accomplish that, you won't feel that you actually succeeded. Remember, after all, you're the only one who can reach to your own success. And for that, you need to know what you have to do to achieve it. So, after everything I said, will you start to accomplish your goals to feel successful in life? Okay, very good. So now we have Salvador Figuereo with... With How Does a Child See Success? How does a child see success? There are many articles. There are many articles on the internet that talk about successful children and what parents do to ensure their success. But do children perceive success the same way as adults? To help children succeed, we have to understand the perspective of success. An important point about success is the process undertaken to succeed. For example, in a child's report card, we may see the grades of the tests. However, did the child experience a positive or negative learning process to attain a grade? The process to attain a grade. It is important to understand the child's strengths and weaknesses. This is a good guide to how empower the child's intrinsic motivation. This is the child's inner drive to this is a child's inner drive to not feel pressure to do an activity. Instead, without intrinsic in motivation, the child will just feel dragged through the learning process and to get in that A grade. Uh, but what if a child feels successful about helping someone today instead of getting an A grade? Helping someone is a great social skill that shows empathy, and it's going to be an important part of the child's life. But would a parent perceive being helpful as a child's success? Knowing all of this, we can't push a child into being successful, but it's important to help. But it's more important to let them find a way that they can define success for themselves in their lives. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, very good. Now we have Giovanni Flores with the title, Do What Makes You Happy Instead of What People Think Is Good For You. Have you ever thought about spending your whole life trying to achieve something? Um, have you ever thought about spending your whole life trying to achieve success in order to gain the approval of others just to satisfy that idea that people have of what success is? In that moment that you become that successful person, you realize it's not what you wanted at all. Normally, when people think of what success is, they think about having a large amount of money or having a good job as a doctor, lawyer, engineer, or um, yeah, having a good job in your professional field. Well, for me, success consists of living your life according to your values, choosing your own goals, making your own decisions without having to meet the expectations of others. Um, Succeeding is in your ability to appreciate what you have, uh, to find satisfaction at everything you do, and to feel happy at every moment without depending on the recognition of others. Success is learning to go from failure to failure without despair, and, and the key is to learn from them, not to throw in the towel and not to fall into despair. Success is moving on. People who believe that success is having a PhD from a major university or having achieved recognition for having obtained the highest grades, um, but despite having feel empty because they are not happy. They are not doing what they really are passionate about. When people are not happy, it's very difficult to be and work with them. Unhappiness drives others away and creates a vicious circle that prevents you from achieving everything you are capable of doing. But more importantly, it stops you from achieving success. That's why when you're not happy and you're not doing something you enjoy, you should stop. Because being unhappy in what you're doing can lead to failure, which is the opposite of success. That is why it's important to know that the relationship between being successful and being happy means enjoying life while giving your best. To be a successful person, you have to have a strong will to succeed and to achieve things in life. Want to grow and have a deep rooted desire to succeed, much more than the rest of the people, in what to do and make you happy. Do something to achieve positive changes and get out of your comfort zone. Thanks. Okay, good. So coming up next is Marco Hernandez with Mauro. I'm so sorry, Mauro. Mauro Hernandez with what is success? Hi, my man. Have you ever started to wonder what exactly success means to you? <laughs> Many of us never stop to ask ourselves this important, this important question. Instead, we may follow the path of everyone else, pleasing those around us. Perhaps we may chase the traditional way of success, money, fame, and power. But why is it that so many celebrities and public figures who have all these things seem so desperately unhappy? Isn't this why success is about? Well, if you're struggling to define what a successful life means, I have two pieces of good news for you. It's never too late to start over, and you get to write your own definition of success. Many of us chase career titles, money, or social status, and yet we don't feel successful when we get those things. That's because you only can measure success in your life when you define what, what drives your happiness and helps you find purpose. 
Success is something that you have to define for yourself and no one can do it for you. Success could mean a sense of giving back to the world and making a difference. It could, may, it could mean a sense of accomplishment and career progression. It could, it could mean being able to do the things you love and provide the best possible upbringing for your child, for your child, children. It's entirely up to you. Thanks. Okay. Now we have Diego Jorge with the title, Who is the most successful person in history? Teacher, not us. I want you to think of someone you think is the most successful person in the world. Well, for me, it's Steve Jobs. He's a very intelligent and very intelligent person. Besides, he created an awesome company called Apple and created all of this great product. <laughs> and created... <laughs> And created all of the great products such as <laughs> and created all the great products such as iPod, iPhone, MacBooks, and more. He's the reason that you have your most of your electronics. The reason why I chose Steve Jobs is because. He has a very inspiring story. Besides a successful company called Apple, he created a lot of great products. Now I'm going to tell you his story. He applied as a video game designer for Atari after dropping out of Reed College. He then had a great idea of creating small products to be laying around your house and your office. He then contacted Steve Wozniak to create the awesome company now called Apple Computers Inc. He founded in April 1st, in April 1st, 1976. <laughs> in April 1st, 1976, with a bright idea to create small devices for people to have in their house. And by just selling products such as Apple Music and memberships, he gained nearly $22 billion. And now Apple is one of the greatest and successful companies in the world. But with Steve Jobs passing away on October 5th, 2011, and leaving Apple with Tim Cooks, he left a very inspiring story and a message that said, your work is going to fill a large part of your life. The only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you think is best. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. As with everything that has to do with your heart, you'll know when you found it. Guys, remember, we need silence to continue. Thank you. Okay, so coming up next, we have Jose Mendez with the title, Can Success Affect You in a Negative Way? I don't want to wear that. You need to. Yeah. Thank you. So, I have a question first. How many of you know what success is? You can raise your hands if you want. It's not obligatory. Well, to clarify, for those of you who don't know, success is the accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. When we set ourselves some goals or conditions and we make them, well, we feel well. But for me, success is different. Success is more of not failing at the task we're trying to do and get rewarded after, even if it's mentally or not. But although success makes you feel good and fulfilled, it can also have negative effects especially mentally. Nothing in many quantities is good, and that also applies to success. 
If we're successful one time, that's great. But if we continue to be successful, it won't feel the same. And can alter your ego. Egoistic people are successful by themselves. Nobody wants to be around someone with a big ego, no matter if they have all the money and fame in the world. Another thing we forget when we are successful is to be humble. Often, we often forget when we were not successful and we're in the bottom of the pyramid and let success blind us from our fellow partners who helped us get on top. If I become the manager of a company, I can't forget about my fellow companions who helped me get where I am now. Success also blinds us from learning new things. When we're successful, we start thinking, well, we can't learn anything else. We're already successful. But the truth is, the most rich people and the philosophers that discovered millions of things all go by one thing. I know that I know nothing. So, in conclusion, money, fame, and glory can be good. It is good, but we can let, us, we can let it blind us from being a good person and being humble. Thank you. Remember, you have to keep on your seat. Don't stand up, guys. Okay. Coming up next is Gustavo Fernandez with the title, Is Money the Key of Success? Is the money the key to success? Everything makes sense in the present because the money is a great incentive and reward for success. If you want to achieve success in your life, leaving the money outside is like jumping into a pool, leaving the water outside. But really, what is the relationship between success and money? Material success can be fleeting, however, abundance is permanent. It is an inner state of connections with your true source. But you can be sh sure that as long as you have good money, management, and abundance, they won't jeopardize your value scale. But why do people believe that money brings happiness? People with higher incomes are happier in part due, a, due to a greater sense of control over life. When you have more money, you, you have more options to, how, to live your life. You can likely see this in the pandemic. Well, to conclude, this mo uh, the money can take away your worries. It can make you have beautiful experience, but there is something that people do not take much into account of that, is that money does not to buy those people to live those experience. Thanks. Okay, good. Now we have Erika Cruz. Make your dream come true. Erika, wait. At a point in our lives, we have asked ourselves, what is success? Or we have had a thought about it. Most of us nowadays, when we think of success, we think of something that brings us happiness, joy, bliss. In my perspective, I have a definition for success, which is making your dream come true, or in other words, manifesting your dream life. Make your dream come true. 
For me, it means achieving the life you desire, being able to get success and happiness from that thing you're passionate about. But this concept can be defined differently by everyone, although the majority of people point to the same direction, achieving a goal. I want to share with you three advices that have helped me reach each goal that I pursue. So my number one tip would be find your bliss, find your passion. Just ask yourself what makes you feel alive and think about it. My second advice is based on creating a vision board. Now this is a bonus one for the artistic and creative people. So design a board however you'd like with pictures of how you desire to see yourself and your reality. And my last tip is based on manifesting your dream life, as simple as that. Just think of the steps you need to take to accomplish those goals. Think of the process and start taking action. These three advices are coming from my experience and opinion, a pair of things and actions that have helped me reach each goal that I pursue. Now, this is a process, but being able to achieve your goal and being able to find your happiness is what makes you a successful person. Thank you. Oh my God. Okay, very good. Now I have my last student. Her name is Rocio Denardi, and her topic is, is happiness the key of success? I want you to think about this. For you, what is more important, success or happiness? Well, many of us tend to believe that happiness, that we will be more happy if we just had more money or a better job. But science shows that this isn't always the case. Fostering happiness in your lives may be what leads us to success, not the other way around. With increasing cost of higher education, spiraling student debt, competition for work, and escalating houses prices, we create a pressure society that demands success. This carries over into the workplace, where mental health problems are now the leading cause of sickness absence in the UK. 70, bi 70 million workdays are lost every year due to mental health issues, costing employers 2.4 billion pounds per year. Researchers used to believe that happiness was at least half genetic, but people are starting to discover how someone's happiness levels can change at any point. Neuroscience and studies of positive psychology prove that happiness is a key driver and precursor of success, with two decades of research backing this up. Positive emotions triggers the release of serotonin and dopamine, which enhance motor control, memory, problem solving, and the ability to process multiple concepts simultaneously. So, positive thinking can really make you more successful. Happiness is generally an attribute to an individual, whereas success can be an attribute to an individual or a group. Most people have a strong desire to be successful in life, and they tend to believe that through this success, they will automatically become happier. Many of us find ourselves chasing happiness. The problem is that we never quite get there. Richard St. John, a marketer and success analyst, talks about the idea that success is not a one-way street, but a constant journey. During his TED Talk, St. John talks about the concept of reaching success and that the work does not stop once you reach this point. To continue being successful, you must, re you must create new ideas and new passions. You must remember why you started doing what you are doing in the first place. Studies indicate that the key of success is no longer reaching or achieving things. It's being happy during this process, and people are starting to realize this. The truth is that we don't know what is more important success or happiness. But after all, it's a decision of each one. Thank you.
Thank you, Rocio. Okay, so now we're going to have my students try the B2 group. The first one to come will be Gabriel Baez. His talk is Humble Billionaire. A common asked question is why don't billionaires give away their money? Of course, none of them would actually give it away, right? Well, some of them do. Ben Dello is a British billionaire with a net worth of over $1 billion. He has made it his goal to be a great philanthropist. Another great example of this is Sam Beckman Fried, who has, made it his, he has also made it his goal to donate his billions to charity. Today I will be discussing and sharing how he obtained his riches and what lessons we can learn from them. Dello made his biggest breakthrough in 2014 when he funded, alongside his partner Arthur Hayes, the crypto exchange currency app BitMEX. He has stated that making partnerships is a great way to find success, as you can get double the work done in just one day. Another one of, this, of Delo's lessons is to, hone on, is to hone your talent. He always had a knack for computer programming, so, when he, so, he also, so he always worked on it. Then he created softwares for hedge funds, such as JSA Capital and JP Morgan. But he also believes that you should try to learn as many things as possible, as this can also give you and grant you many opportunities in life. Now Sam has a very different story. He always wanted to make money to help other people. So when he noticed that Bitcoin in the US was $10,000, whilst in Japan it was $11,000, he proceeded to buy the Bitcoin in the US and sold it in Japan until he reached $20 million. He then funded his cryptocurrency exchange app, FTX. He stated that if he wouldn't have been so observant, he wouldn't know where he would be. In conclusion, you should always make par partnerships, perfect your talents, broaden your career options, keep persevering and have a career goal, and finally, always be observant, and this will lead you to success. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Thank you, Gabriel. Now we're gonna have here Juan Daniel Beato. His talk is, why am I such a failure? Ahora sí, ahora sí. ¿Qué fue? Okay. ¿Qué fue? Okay. Why am I such a failure? Well, you may have asked yourself at a point in your life, why am I such a failure? Well, thinking that you're a failure because you did something wrong or because something bad happened to you that you think is your fault is for sure not the way to go. Maybe you got in trouble at school or your significant other dumped you. Perhaps your family is impregnating ideas in your head by telling you what your life should be like. When you feel like a failure, it's best not to judge yourself because failing at something does not make you a total failure. Focusing on your failures will not only make you feel insufficient, but can also cause depression and lower your self-esteem. To feel less like a failure at everything, you need to reassess your, go your goals. <laughs> you can stop being a failure if you take time to understand why you cannot complete tasks successfully. Every challenge becomes manageable with the right plan. First, look at where and how you failed in the past. Then look at people who succeeded. What did they do differently? What did they do that... Uh, 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 moment. Once you have analyzed your failures and made a plan, you no longer have to feel like a failure. But instead, a goal-driven person who understands the challenges of life and decides to act upon them instead of tearing themselves apart. And before I go, remember that every time you speak poorly about yourself and everything you do, you're talking to that little boy who once believed everything was possible because he saw superheroes do it. Superheroes are real, just not exactly how they taught us in movies. Superheroes are, are those who choose to work through adversities and take them to make the world a better place. We all have the capacity. Let's all be those superheroes we once believed could do everything they put their mind to because we can. Thank you. Ah, un applauso, un applauso. Un applauso.
Un aplauso, teacher. Thank you, Juan Daniel. Coming up next, we have Maria de los Santos. What comes after perfection? The definition of perfection is the action or process of improving something until it's faultless. We as a whole have a desire to achieve perfection in one way or another. And though we ourselves understands, understand as the creators of this concept that this is impossible, we still find, find it slithering its way into our hobbies, our, our work ethics, and even the way we raise our children. And this as a standard can cause irreparable damage not only in our successful life, but in our day-to-day -day life. I know this because I've been through this. As, I, as a kid, I was able to get 90s and 100s by doing the bare minimum due to my ability to memorize and understand. And since I didn't have many friends or other things to distract myself with, I spent every waking hour I could to study, it, to the point where this is all I can remember. I was also talented in, on, in other areas and I'll constantly tried to better them. But after years of high grades, and improving my and my constant improvement of my average, uh, and seeing my f I, sorry, uh, I w it became harder to satisfy myself. And once I started a new school and seeing all these amazing people working so hard and getting the same grades I used to get and even better made me feel like I would never stand out in the sea of talent. This is what the standard of perfection did to me. It made me unable to see my progress and it, it made me unsatisfied with myself and everything I did. This dissatisfaction led to, me, uh, cross the, uh, led to chronic procrastination, panic attacks due to conflicting ideals, and essentially feeling worthless. So I did nothing. I had no energy and I couldn't even be around people. This was one of the lowest points of my life. The reason this standard did so much damage to me was it was my whole per personality, my ideals, my life to the point I lost my own meaning. This is what happened after. Nothing. After so long of attempting to reach the impossible, what came was nothing. The crushing weight of this standard meant that even the slightest fault would deprive me of reaching it. So what did I do to prevent failing? Nothing. If I put no effort, no work, no nothing, I wouldn't have any flaws. And while I wasn't perfect, I wasn't failing at being perfect. That's what came after perfection, or at least the closest I ever came to it. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. I gotta say that was perfect, right? <clears throat> now we have here Maria de Champs. Now we have here Maria de Champs. Her talk, uh, talk title is My Path to, to, to Success. Do, you know? I'm so okay. My path to success. We all know the word success, but what is behind achieving your goals and succeed? Five days ago, I had one goal, and it was to achieve this writing piece. And if I'm honest, I didn't have motivation, inspiration, or the time to dispose of my full potential because of other responsibilities, such as homework, projects, and quizzes. And I had a lot of time to dispose to get some place with my speech. However, I let the weeks, days, hours, and minutes flow and go away. I wanted my speech to be perfect, but as Salvador Dali said, have no fear of perfection, because you'll never reach it. I kept modifying my essay, the introduction, the development, and even the topic, because it should be interesting enough to captivate the audience's attention. And at the very least, I wanted to be satisfied with what I wrote. I wasn't, though. One of the reasons people struggle to find the key to success is overthinking. Overthinking is the result of designing actions, while 
analyzing determination about a decision. Overthinking caused my lack of motivation and my lack of creativity because I couldn't even choose to start or to be satisfied and confident about what I wrote as a result of overthinking if it was enough for others' validation. That's when I reached our topic, the key to success. For most of us, the keys to success are perseverance, determination, and self-confidence. But the real key is to start. Start the one thing you thought it would be challenging for you and fail, disappoint yourself, and eventually learn, start over, reorganize yourself, and don't try to be the best. Try to do your best. Maybe it is worth it or maybe it's not, but who doesn't want to achieve their goals and succeed? Success can be achieved. And as well, concluding this writing piece. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Okay, now we have here Miranda Spin, self esteem. Thank you. <laughs> How a bad self esteem affects your path to success? Self-esteem is confidence in one's own worth or abilities. It gathers beliefs about oneself as well as emotional states like triumph, despair, pride, and shame. Self-esteem can change the way we see the world and ourselves. It affects us in our daily life even without realizing it. It's such an important aspect of ourselves that can even change how we act and who we are. When our self-esteem is low, we think negatively, we lose our essence, and we feel a fear. That is the problem. That feeling when fear takes over makes us unable to try new things. We give up on accomplishing what we desire to achieve in fear of failing. It makes us believe that we're not capable and that we're, gonna, uh, we're going to fail no matter how hard we try. And it makes even the slightest attempts worthless in our eyes. This happens to me really often. Last week I started playing soccer after four years of not playing. I stayed in the afternoons at soccer practice because the teacher saw in me a potential that I didn't want to recognize. Even the fact of me playing in front of my teammates terrified me because my thoughts told me that I was not good enough to be on the team or that I was not cut out for this sport. I felt like I was going to fall from failure. It turns out at the end of practice, the teacher told me that I did an excellent job and that he wanted me at the girls' soccer team at school. At that moment, I realized I didn't have confidence in myself. I was surprised by the fact that by not having confidence in myself, I was totally blinded. From that moment, I began to work on myself and to trust that I could do anything I desired to do. To be successful in life, it is really important for you to trust in yourself, to have confidence in yourself. If we do not believe that you can do anything, try new challenges, or simply try new things, we will never reach our goals. Therefore, we will never reach the success that we have planned. We must always work on our self-esteem as this affects our path to success. Thank you. Thank you, Miranda. Coming up next, we have Laura Gomez. Who says I can't? Who says I can't? I don't like people setting my goals for me. I've always felt like my future was planned by other people, or like I had to follow other people's steps to greatness, and that was the final success. But guess what? I don't want to be a doctor, I don't want to be a lawyer, and I don't want to be a vet. That's not what success is about. I have been taught at, at a very young age that we have to always be at the top. We have to have the highest grades, the best college, do an outstanding job, or else we will be considered a failure. 
I will consider myself successful when I give my all towards something I love because it is a waste of time for me to study something I'm not even interested in just for me to prove a point to someone or to make someone happy and regret it for the rest of my life. We are mature enough to set our own challenges and to write our own future. How could they define our success when they have not yet updated with when they have not yet updated with the society we live in. The life they lived was based on marrying young, having a lot of kids, and the only job considered successful had to do either with health or numbers. Our parents didn't have a choice because that was the only definition of success. But this generation could never be happy that way. We like to achieve the impossible. We like to set our own challenges. This generation is seen as rebellious just for not wanting to follow that path. But in all honesty, we just want to have our own opinion. My success depends only on me and my devotion to my goal. Of course, I have been blessed with such understanding parents that have helped me to keep going and to not give up, keep reaching for my goal. But at the end of the day, it is still my life, and I'm the one at the steering wheel. It's important for us to have the, su the support of our parents, for them to comfort us and tell, tell us to keep going and reaching for our goal because they want what's best for us, and what's best for us is to enjoy our life. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Now we have Rodrigo Gomez, The Bill Project. Okay, so I think a lot of us know who Bill Gates is. One of the richest people on the planet because he founded Microsoft in 1975 and he's now worth over 100 billion dollars as of October 2022. But the thing is, how did he get to this point? How did he get to the point of making an astonishing company and having 100 billion dollars? Uh, here is his journey. First. Bill Gates was passionately interested in computers and programming since he was an eighth grade student. Yes, 13 years old. Uh, he followed his passion, this strong passion he had for computers and programming with his close friend Paul Allen and founded this company called Microsoft. But we'll talk about that more later. Uh, this shows uh, that when you start something at an early point of your life, you get molded around it. Not only you will be uh, uh, better of chasing your dreams, but you will be uh, less and provocative to get to the point of you giving up. And that is the point of what makes people uh, lose and fail, because they give up at an early point of their life and they don't achieve what they want to really do. In the year 1980, Microsoft was released, and who would have thought at the start they didn't have many sales? So the pair decided to only focus on Microsoft because in the start they actually were uh, working with another company called MITS. Uh, and from there they wanted to actually get the catchy catchy. So uh, no matter how hard you work in your life, there will always be times you cannot control. You will get knocked down, but you need to be able to stand up. And that is why Microsoft was getting popular because of market demands because the couple and the company stood up. Uh, the journey wasn't easy. Despite the company facing challenges, Microsoft and by extension, Bill Gates were incredibly successful. So at finals, if you've had a dream that you start working towards when you're young, you'll be more immune to people telling you what you can or can't do. So by the time you're an adult and people start to take more notice of what you're working towards, you will be stubborn enough to uh, just ignore them. Thank you. Thank you, Rodrigo. Very good job. Now we have here Matias Isaacs, Success. be a good one.
Humans love sex. Sex is a natural act and a healthy way for the body to release endorphins and build up fluids. Plus, it's fun and feels great. But have you ever thought of the importance of sex as motivation? Do you know what the point of human existence is? Well, despite what that motivational YouTube video or Instagram quote might have told you, it is not to find yourself. The point of human existence is for you to pass on your genetic material and have children. That's where the drive to have sex comes from when we go through puberty. When <laughs> When we go through adulthood, we become extremely horny. That's our biological imperative. But beyond that, sex has become an important part of our daily lives. It affects how you develop in our modern world. Sexual activity increases the release of both dopamine and oxytocin. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that is linked to the reward centers in our brain. Dopamine release decreases stress and anxiety allowing you to perform better at work. Plus, good sex is like a workout for your pelvic floor muscles. When you have an orgasm, it causes contractions in those muscles, which strengthens them. The recipe is success and sex. If you're in a good mood, you'll be better at work. Better sex equals more creativity and productivity. Yes, also, sexual activity can help you sleep. Yes, sex can actually make it easier to fall asleep. This is mostly because of the hormones that are released during the act. Also, it is hard to be stressed while having sex. Stress just seems to melt away afterward. Let's take someone who is asexual. People who are asexual are more prone to increased anxiety, depression, and trouble sleeping. Lack of physical intimacy can also lead to touch starvation, which can contribute to, contribute to loneliness, isolation, and even compromise your immune system. All this compared to someone that, is, that has um, sexual activity. So we can conclude that sex has a lot of benefits. If you want my advice, don't focus on the bad things that make you stressed, and do focus on having sex. Good job. Controversial topic, right? <clears throat> now we have Emma Molina. Motivation. So I did not want to write this speech. For days, I just sat in my room wondering what I was going to write about and how miserable I feel while writing this. I still am. But then that's when it hit me. I'm not motivated to do my speech. Probably because I'd rather literally watch paint dry than give an emotional speech derived of anyone to give inspiration to people in the first place. But I need the grade to make my parents proud, and this is the only way I can get that. So here I am teaching you about the wonders that govern your mind and how to become more successful. So there are two types of motivation. Extrinsic motivation, which is basically rewards and punishment, and intrinsic motivation, which comes from your want to do the thing, something I lack at the moment. Do extrinsic rewards increase motivation? Not really. When grades, for example, are used as a, re as a reward for good behavior, there are a plethora of negative consequences that can happen. But the most important one is that the subjects lose interest for the activity. I know that in most American school, my priority are my grades and whether I get accepted into the honors group, not the actual learning part. Um, hell, I don't even remember the last time I actually learned something in school. You know, it's actually funny how schools are meant to teach you, but the system, but the system is so archaic and traditional that practically everyone, apart from the students, are in denial about how grades actually make you less smart than you're supposed to be. And then, people doubt their abilities while simultaneously praising a system that made them dumb in the first place. But that's a discussion for another day, and I don't have much time. So let's move on, shall we? 
um, does extrinsic does intrinsic motivation do any good? Sorry. Um, well, it does make people more passionate. There's a big problem with this method, and that is that you can't teach someone if they aren't willing to learn in the first place. At the end of the day, which is better? I don't really know. Both work great for different things. I can't give you all the answers you need. It's exhausting and cumbersome. And plus, there's not, there's, there's not like a miracle cure you can find at the local supermarket that can give you all the answers you need without having to put much effort into it. It all takes time, effort, and most importantly, motivation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Emma. That was a motivating speech. Sorry, guys. Wait a second, please. Ready? Good. So now we're going to have Emil Noel stop being a loser. We've all watched movies, that is, unless you've lived under a rock your whole life. Usually the plot in movies centers itself around the main character, who works towards a goal. Throughout the movie, the main character might see a point in their journey where there's just no more point to try anymore. Then they'll have a 10 minute long motivational speech where they rethink their life choices. Finally, they'll work their way up to their goal again. Of course, the meaning of success is different for everyone. Not everyone's goal is killing some legendary fire dragon. What you generally consider a minor accomplishment could even be someone's life goal. That's because everyone has different expectations for themselves and different goals they would like to accomplish. Of course, that means that if success is different for everyone, so is failure. Let's say your life goal is to get an air fryer. This air fryer is $100, which is a lot of money for you. With your miserable minimum wage job, you try to save up enough money for your air fryer. You start working your way to a raise, cut down on certain expenses, but you're still not able to afford it. After some long time, you give up on the air fryer. It was all just some stupid idea. But when you're old and thinking about what you've done in life, you realize you've done absolutely nothing and that buying an air fryer would be the one thing you'd actually like to do. You find some, you find some money in your savings and you start selling some old stuff. At last, there it is, $100. You go down to the store to buy your air fryer and it's all you've ever wished for, an air fryer there in your hands. No, but seriously, failure is a terrible feeling at first, but it's an important part of life in the long run. Learn to embrace it and see it as a stepping stone to success. You might get knocked down time after time, but the thing is, you can't be a failure if you keep getting back up. You can only be one if you give up. So don't be afraid to fail, be afraid not to try. So, to overcome failure, accept the mistakes you've made, learn from them, and once you've moved on and come to terms with your feelings, the best you could do is try again. Thank you, Emil. I think I need to buy an air fryer. <laughs> um, coming up next, we have Jade Soto. The TED Talk title is Give It a Try. You are a loser. I assume you have heard these words before because people are aware of every single stumble or mistake we make and precisely those words are the ones that break our self-esteem into little pieces. From a very young age we are taught that we must do everything perfectly and I'm not going to lie to you, I am a bit of a perfectionist myself and I cannot help it. If we think about the word success, I'm pretty sure that each one of you would define it for me in a different way because it's as the saying goes, every head is a world. I'm going to go to old times, to the ones of our great-grandparents and beyond. Life was simpler. Back then, it was considered a success to have many children, a plot to plant, and a modest house. Without so many modern things, one was happy. 
We know that times change and with time technology advances and life demands more of what you can achieve and what you can have. But you don't need to have 10 master's degrees to be successful. We can even see prosperous businesses that are started from home and are recognized with great profits. Most of us have social media. We have seen what has been happening. Anyone that makes a video dancing becomes viral and known. We have the boom of the reggaeton, which has displaced traditional rhythms and its exponents are recognized throughout the whole world. Now I'm going to go with different thoughts. Having a prestigious company or a beauty care line. Maria wants to have a family at 50. Charles wants to have a business at 60. And James wants to open a mechanics and paintings workshop. So, what does success want us to understand? It is the happiness that is achieved regardless of your age, gender, social or economic status. It comes to all of us in one way or another through efforts, failures, time, tears, because nothing is easy. And I'm going to mention to you these names. Stephen Hawking, Frida Kahlo, Helen Keller. These geniuses that I just mentioned are people that changed their entire destinies because their abilities were physical and not mental, and they are recognized throughout the whole world. And finally, I am going to ask you a question. What excites you? If your answer is to be happy without any limitations, for me, you have already achieved success. Thank you, Jay. That was great. Now we have Alina Torres. A procrastinator's guide to make your parents proud. Repeat the title. Hmm? Repeat the title. Okay, so this will be a procrastinator's guide on how to make your parents proud. Let's begin with a quick exercise, shall we? So, first. Imagine you have like this huge project due in a month, right? This could be an essay, a presentation, or even a speech. You are well aware that you have to do this project. But why start today? You have a whole month to do it. Leave it for tomorrow. Heck, leave it for next week. This process of I have to do this, but I won't goes on and on until, surprise, it's due tomorrow. And now we panic, sit down, tippity tappity, and the month long project is done in 12 hours. End of scene. This is what one would call procrastination. It's a terrible habit of extending big and overwhelming tasks to as late as humanly possible. Many things contribute to this. It could be you find the project itself boring or hard to do, or not knowing where to start. I'll explain this better with three characters, right? We have rationality, gratification, and panic. Rationality is focusing on getting you to do your work, while gratification is convincing you to slack off instead. Once a deadline approaches, however, panic awakes from those slumber and takes full control over the wheel, making sure no one eats, drinks, or sleeps until this project is finished. So, how do we fix this? Curing bad habits such as procrastination is a very long and effortful process. So we can leave that for later because I present you the next best thing after sliced bread because today you will learn how you can procrastinate efficiently and successfully. So, Let's split this into three steps. Keyword split, because now you're going to take your super long one month project and split it into four smaller tasks. St tasks you have to fulfill by the end of each week. Now, it's less overwhelming. Number two, going back to reasons why most people procrastinate is because they don't know how to, st how to start from the beginning. So don't, order is for losers. Instead, start with the part you're most excited about or the part you hate the least. Why? Because. It's always much simpler to start if you already know where you're going to end up. And lastly, this is my favorite, by the way. What if I told you that Mr. Gratification isn't really the smartest guy in the room? You can trick yourself into thinking you're having fun by associating work with something you typically enjoy. Take me, for example. I like ghost hunting videos, so I leave those for the time I do my homework. Now I'm entertained and being productive. A time like these, one might wonder, why not try to fix it instead of focusing on taming it? To put it simply, there are many ways, articles, tutorials, on how to get rid of procrastination, but very little on how to deal with it. I personally think it's very important to try and understand it as much as possible so that when the time of overcoming it arrives, we are more prepared. I genuinely do not wish this habit upon anyone, but I truly hope that this small guide serves you well.
Thank you. Hope you learned to procrastinate, guys. Okay, thank you. Now, I think Alina, we're gonna have now Emily Diaz. Is it worth it? Okay. Is it worth it? It's a question we ask ourselves constantly, whether we're doubting our education or wondering if we'll have a stable future. What if we reach all of our goals and we're, we're still unsatisfied? What if after all of that work, we're still unhappy? Studies say that only about 8% of people actually reach their goals. So what should we do when we spend our whole lives aiming towards something that may not even be there at the end of the day? One of the enemies of happiness is adaptation, says Dr. Thomas Gilovich. We buy things that make us happy and we succeed, but only for a while. New things are exciting to us at first, but then we adapt to them. The anticipation or idea of a desired result is usually more satisfying than the result, than the result itself. Once we get what we want, whether that's wealth, a job, or a good workplace position, we adapt to our circumstances, and that excitement we feel for something new eventually fades. Oftentimes, it seems that these experiences we seek end up being underwhelming or disappointing compared to what we originally had in mind. This disappointment is only magnified by the arduous efforts that many dedicate every day to, towards reaching their goals, only to be rewarded with a brief semblance of self-gratitude. However, it's obvious that for success, you must pay a price. You can't just sit down doing nothing and expect your dreams co to come true. To, to gain something, you must lose something. Success comes with sacrifices, and according to many, one of those sacrifices is happiness. But what if success is happiness? This entire time, I've defined success as something tangible, like getting a job or reaching some kind of goal. However, let's look at it differently. How about instead of aiming towards short-lived experiences that only make us happy for a small amount of time, we work towards our overall well-being. Spend your days doing what you love and enjoy your time to the fullest. Life is short, and I don't know about you, but I'd rather look back on it with pride than with regret. Thank you. Stay right there, right there. Thank you, Emmy. That was pretty good to be her first stop. Coming up next, we have Gabriel Fernandez. Believe. Many people has, have asked the question, what is success? Or how do I become successful? But the truth is, everyone puts a different meaning to the word. Or everyone has a different point of view of what success is. But the only thing we can't go around is we have to believe. Believing is one of the most controversial problems of this generation. Because people rather think uh, negatively and fail than to think positively just to fail. It's like the saying, if I already believe I'm gonna fail, then I won't get disappointed. Too many people live by this saying. And it's getting really out of hand. We're letting ourselves fall under this sort of spell that just destroys our confidence and most of the time doesn't even let us try new things. And you wanna know what the worst part is? The worst part is that the school doesn't even help us. The school teaches us to not think outside the box. The school teaches us that there is only one right answer and nothing more. Most of schools don't even explore our creativity, therefore our dreams and beliefs uh, get smaller by the second. Most schools don't even explore our creativity. 
And the truth is, the majority of schools don't give us about our dreams and goals. That shows how fucked up the system is. But that is success, right? Being able to overcome that fucked up system no matter the cost. Not letting it destroy our goals and dreams just because there are rules that are meant to be broken. But the truth is, the rules are not always right. Most people um, live their lives in quiet desperation, not knowing the truth that what feels as though a burden pushing down on your shoulders is actually a feeling of pride that you can become successful one day. It's actually a sense of purpose pushing, pushing you to greater heights. Never forget that fear is a precursor to valor and that strife and triumph in the face of fear is what it means to become successful. So don't let anyone tell you or any system or job tell you that you can become successful and believe because everyone can become successful and it's our turn now. Thank you, Gabriel. Last but not least, we have Ariana Garcia. How? Have you been contemplating your whole life recently? Do you not know if what you're doing is right? Or did you just not want to disappoint your parents? Have you ever just wanted to be successful? Well, wonder no more. Here at Howdy will teach you just how to be successful with this quick five steps. Step one, live purposely. In order to achieve your dreams and be the person you want to be, you have to start paying attention to your actions. Of course, alternatively, you can always just look in social media and and see what other people are doing. I mean, they look like they know what they're doing, so why not? Step two. Step two, stick to your commitments. Uh, planning is not sufficient. You can, planning is not sufficient. If you're going to do something, stick to it. Of course, you can always use your mom's constant yelling over how you're not doing anything fulfilling with your life as a reminder. But you might be doing something that you love, but Society doesn't say that's successful, so stop at once. Step three, find out that everything you're doing with your life is not really something that you want and you're only paying attention to what other people say you should do. In this and here, you, should ask your, you will start asking yourself questions like, am I really happy? Is any of this worth it? But don't worry, at least you have the job your mom always told you to get and a girlfriend that you don't actually love, but hey, she's super hot. If you're not... <laughs> If, you're not, uh, if you don't like this lifestyle, please refer to step four. Step four, in tough times, you always have your friends. At least your dad told you something like that. He told you that you should only stick by rich and successful people that will benefit you in the long run. This has led you to cut off all your previous friends that will actually listen to your sad story. Some people, you will, you will start asking yourself some questions like step three. Some people might even advise you to go see a therapist, but you're successful and successful people don't need help from others, so why would you do that? Step five, wake up. Realize that everything you're doing is not what you actually wanted. You're not happy, you're not surrounded by people that even care about you. Why are you doing this? Just to be what others say you should do? Just to be what your parents couldn't? Is any of this really worth it? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you so much, 10th graders, for your talks about success. You actually taught us a lot about how to achieve success, all of you mentioned different points of view, some of you mentioned, or most of you mentioned, 
that is something personal, that you can actually achieve it by doing things that you like, that sometimes is happiness. And I completely agree with you guys. Achieving success is something personal. It's achieving goals. And you actually achieve the goal of giving your talks. So I'm really proud as um, the coordinator of the English department and also with my teachers. I think you did very well. So round of applause for you guys. And thank you so much. And we are, it's the end of our second day of Lumuri TED Talk. Bye-bye.